In boxing and martial arts, you often see top competitors practice by punching in the air. In Smash, you'll often see top players ask for a button check and throw moves near each other but not at each other. What you're watching is shadow boxing. In shadow boxing, you aren't fighting your opponent, you're fighting their shadow. We're talking about one of the most interesting, deepest, and strangest practicing methods that happens not only in all fighting games, but in all fighting sports. Unlike some of our other videos, this one is more for like the mid to high level type of players. However, it's still practical for our lower level players that want to get to that level but haven't reached it yet, especially if they don't have other good competition to play with. Another great and practical resource to look into is ProGuides.com. On ProGuides.com, we have courses from top players as well as a live coaching platform, Instapro. We're working on building up more in-depth character guides as well, so check it out if you can. In many ways, shadow boxing exists for the moments we don't have access to our resources. If you live in a tri-state area and have the money and time, you can find competition. And if you learn from the challenge and advice you get, you can level up from that competition. But if you don't have real competition to box with, you have to box with your shadows instead. In case it isn't 100% clear yet, shadow boxing is the act of fighting a pretend opponent. In Smash, the opponent doesn't have to be imaginary though. They could be a CPU or even a lower level opponent. You use this less skilled opponent as a stand-in for stronger ones. Essentially, you can use the CPU or even a low level opponent as a shadow too. Back in the melee days, shadow boxing was essential. The melee players didn't have net play or uncle punch as practice tools. Melee God PPMD wrote an entire guide on it that we'll link in the description. Mewtwo King is still known for going to tournaments and shadow boxing CPUs too. Shadow boxing is so useful because it hones in on a few key skills in fighting. Muscle memory, reaction, focus, and rhythm. Don't worry, we'll explain all of these as we explain how to shadow box. The first step of shadow boxing is building the shadow. To build the shadow, you don't even need a CPU or another player. You just need a visualization. You need the image of the optimal play. You want the image of the optimal play so you can start practicing for it and getting ready when it comes. CPUs and casual players won't know the optimal play, let alone even go for it, but even many mid-level competitors will. For example, let's take out of shield options. Out of shield options are often the easiest thing to optimize an ultimate. The best options are fast ones you could do without dropping shield. So for Cloud, it's his up special, Climb Hazard, which only has 7 frames of startup. Cloud's up special is so obviously his best out of shield options that even mid-level players spin. Now if you're playing against a CPU or less experienced player, they might go for a bigger or slower option. They may drop shield and cross slash. It takes 11 frames to drop shield, then 10 frames for the first hit of cross slash to come out, 21 frames total, 3 times slower than climb hazard. That's so slow that, given human reaction times, the cloud wouldn't even be able to punish some dash attacks on shield. Playing against cloud can lead to a lot of bad habits, like assuming it's safe to dash attack someone's shield. However, playing against that cloud can be valuable if you shadow box by imagining that they go for climb hazard even if they don't. Now instead of dash attacking, you'll need to think of other options that are much safer on shield. That prepares you for a higher grade of competition. You also will likely still win the interaction because whatever beats climb hazard is probably going to beat drop shield before I'll slash 2. The downside is, you will likely get a less optimal punish. If you know an opponent will cross slash when you touch their shield, you could easily abuse them for it. But in building habits that are good for a 3 stocking a CPU or casual friend, you'll also be building habits to punish non-optimal moves even mid-level players won't commit to. Basically, you're building habits that don't help, and could even hurt you in bracket. If you keep trying to punish cross slash out of shield and bracket, you'll eat a lot of up specials. So you should get an idea of what an optimal play pattern looks like for your and their character. For example, if you watch Warrior Krom, you might notice that pros hardly ever dash attack on shield, but they will jab a shield, or run up and space a retreating aerial. When you shadow box, you should try to practice and get used to these options as well. You can do that with a totally stationary CPU or no CPU at all. You think of a character's good options in neutral and practice the actual motion for it. This leads to the first big key skill we want to hone, muscle memory. A lot of pro players have genuinely great reaction times, but even more of them have much better memory. They've practiced and run into situations so often that they build up muscle memory, which makes all their decisions easier. This is part of how players can react to things like DI or mix-ups. They don't have to waste time thinking about what to do. They call on their muscles to remember the motion and simply react. When you start to practice certain good options in neutral, they start to become natural. That retreating aerial stops being something you think about. That full hop T jolt into grab or aerial becomes something stored in your muscles. You train the back of your mind to hold your motions and inputs so the front of your mind can focus on watching your character model. Then when you see their jump animation or their shield, you can quickly execute an aerial or grab. 
you will have to gradually learn characters' good neutral options and play patterns to shadow box. You can do this by watching competitive Smash analytically, trying to spot what a great player does with your character. You can also do this by thinking about your moves and how they interact with the opponent. Can I use this projectile to cover my approach? Does this move have enough shield stun to let me grab my opponent? Does the move have enough lag that I could punish it with a cross slash instead of just a climb hazard? When practicing your best safe approach option, you visualize when you try to approach safely and practice against the air, the CPU, or a casual friend. When you visualize the best move for when they miss a big hit, you practice landing your hardest punish. You can also try and create these scenarios yourself against your opponent. So, to try to practice out of shield options, you could take a defensive posture and wait for your opponent to approach with an attack. Then, you practice hitting them with your best option. Eventually, they'll start to grab you and you can start to practice your best move to spot dodge cancel. This hones the second key skill, Reaction. Reaction becomes easier with preparation. If your mind is ready for an option, it reacts more readily too. Shadow boxing lets you practice common reactions so they're ready when you need them. It also lets you break out of the habit of using an uncommon reaction that works against CPUs or lower level players you face more often. You can keep that habit for the odd moment it works, but you'll need to develop new, better habits to defeat better players. If you want to practice reaction time against the CPU, a lot of the Smash community recommends that you put a CPU to the level 7. At this level, the CPU approaches and throws out attacks more often, and at 8 and 9, the CPU plays more defensively. It's also worth noting that your goal in shadow boxing isn't to dominate the set or the opponent, it's to build good habits and visualize beating the toughest opponents. So if you're practicing reactions, it's often better to stay defensive. There's no need to go into aggro mode and chase down the CPU. We often learn faster from practice if we focus on one area at a time. This brings us to the third key skill, focus. We can also use shadow boxing to build focus in several different and interesting ways. The obvious is to build focus around certain play patterns by practicing them or practicing against them. You can visualize an entire play pattern and rehearse the counterplay. For example, if that Pikachu keeps T jolting in neutral to cover their approach, you could jump backwards or in place to bait them into an aerial. When the aerial misses, you hit back. All of this takes precise motion and timing you can shadow box out. But PPMD actually details a way you can build other kinds of focus. PPMD recommends shadow boxing with the audio of the crowd to practice playing under pressure. This tests your focus and helps you learn how to keep it on a game in tense moments. Not only can shadow boxing practice focus, it can create it. A lot of boxers and martial artists use shadow boxing as a meditative tool. The routine practice, the visualization, the rhythm of your inputs can actually put you in the zone. Now we're on to the last skill, rhythm. No, you haven't accidentally stumbled into the secret hidden pro guides tip for Osu yet. The rhythm of Smash comes from the subconscious ways that we play. As we practice and play, we build a lot of natural habits and motions that come from tons of experience. Our brains can't hold all that information on the screen at all times, so a lot of the information it stores is muscle memory or quick reactions. That becomes our rhythm. So your rhythm doesn't just dictate how you approach, but the timings inside that approach. Top competitors read each other's rhythms and even adjust their own. To work on rhythm, PPMD actually recommends practicing with a metronome. The metronome provides a literal beat to practice to and will get you consciously thinking about rhythm. What beat do you attack on? How often are you attacking? When would it be smart to slow the tempo? When should you speed up? Now we've covered the four big key skills that shadow boxing reinforces. Muscle memory, reaction, focus, and rhythm. By fighting against the shadow of an optimal player, or even a certain playstyle, you can train yourself to win against that player or style. Just remember, this is an advanced practice method. By the time PPMD wrote that post, he'd beaten Mewtwo King Bracket and placed top 8 at big events. Stock. It's a happening. Four stock. Four stock. Cuatro. Cut. Cuatro. And that is it. Que lastima! Finito! Dr. PP, he takes it! Even executing it properly means to have an idea of what optimal play looks like. Master the basics first. Still, we hope to find it helpful no matter your level. And we hope to find our site, ProGuides.com, helpful too. If you're looking for even more ways to win against real people in their shadows, be sure to check it out. And if you ever feel silly fighting shadows, take these words from Bruce Lee. I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times.
In boxing and martial arts, you often see top competitors practice by punching in the air. So stupid.